It's Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Packers and the Bucks. And it's all up next. DA Sports coverage of the NFL has us on the west coast of the Sunshine State. Downtown Tampa is the spot. Raymond James Stadium. Today we've got an NFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Happy to be on hand. I'm Brandon Gunn with Charles Davis. And before we kick, partner, your keys to the game, please. Well, my keys are on the defensive side of the ball for both teams. And the big one, making sure you avoid giving up the big play. These safeties are going to get tested all game long. Their job, keep the ball in front of them, tackle people, make them run extra plays in order to try and score. Here's the punter, Jake Kamart is set to do the honors, and off we go now from Tampa. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. Six foot four inch Jordan Love taking the field for the first time. The 2020 first round pick from Utah State set to lead Green Bay. And at the start of Jordan Love's NFL career, he had one of the best seats in the stadium watching Aaron Rodgers work. But now, he's looking for more than that. Rocket arm, big play potential. And he wants to show this organization that he's capable of being a dependable starter for the foreseeable future. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he's gonna be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. You often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Love. Got his man. That's Luke Musgrave. Seven yards there and a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They quickly out wide. This is Watson. It'll go as a gain of four. And that's going to bring up second down. to throw now here's love and down he goes a Buccaneer sack multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game now that was just absolute perfect man coverage nowhere for them to go with the football led right to a sack that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary now on third and long they'll look to throw Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Partner, that's excellent timing right there. Breaking off the route and being able to hit it right when he stops. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. A complete once again to Watson. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it'll be second down. 
Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. On second down, Jacobs. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Love looking to throw it. He finds his man complete. It's Jacobs. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. The screen good for six, but it's not enough as it leads to a fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. Under center, it's the 2017 Heisman Trophy winner as you get a look at Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, He'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also, when his team needs that confidence, when they need that jolt, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 16. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They go play action. Mayfield. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Mayfield. That's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down, and third down defense going to be vital in this game, able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. the ground it's Jacobs to start the drive that's to about the 28 second down coming up well from an offensive perspective that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards but let's flip it over to the defensive side they now have the advantage three three yard gains that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down that's what you're looking for when you're playing defense throwing love Pass caught, it's Romeo Dobbs. And they get him to the ground quickly, but he's out near midfield at the 49-yard line. Here's Jacobs on first and ten. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. 
The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Off the play fake, Love. Who finds his receiver, Watson? His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. Love now. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Out of the shotgun, it's Love. Now a quick throw there is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incomplete. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Now Love. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. That's Kalaja Kansi in to get him down. A third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, that shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Mayfield now. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. They could not contain Kenny Clark as he gets home for the sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. And let's see the Packers defensively, six DBs, so a dime look on third. Could play coverage or bring pressure. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Oh, the return is Reed. That'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and ten. They'll begin the drive with a run by Dillon. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. 
They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's a second and eight. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Well, the pressure gets to Love, and he'll go down. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Third and 19. Here's Love. And incomplete on the deep ball. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that'll move the ball downfield. And here's Daniel wheeling on now to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And, partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second... Run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. On second down, they'll run with White, and he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now Mayfield. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Mayfield on play action. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. But forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They run straight ahead here with White. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. 
You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Ball on the 27. Here's second down and eight. Play fake. Mayfield. Throw left side. Hauled in by Otten. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. Third and four, he did just enough, and I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jair Alexander, and the Packers are going to take over at their own 11-yard line. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. And now the Packers get set to go. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? Following the interception, Love, quick slant to Watson. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Here's Jacobs from the gun. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. But I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. On first and ten, Love. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Play fake. Here's Love. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. The Packers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Play action this time with Love. That is caught. This across midfield and inside the 45. A very well executed play. It goes for 29 yards. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in a defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. 
Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Second down, Love. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Bucs are going to take over here up near the 40. So consecutive interceptions here early on in this one, and maybe setting the tone, Charles, for a game where the defense really takes center stage. And don't you think the Pope offenses are really catching a bit from their coaching staff about avoiding these turnovers that we've seen early? I think both teams are trying to find an advantage. We know that. Can one of them break away and take control of this game? And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And a close game like this, Charles, those interceptions like they had on the last drive could be costly, but here they've got another opportunity to seize control of this game. And they'd better take advantage of it because otherwise, if they end up losing by one score, they'll relive this over and over and over until they have another opportunity to wipe it away. Following the interception, Mayfield. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now a give up the middle. This is White. Oh, he faked it with a jump. Now he's got some room. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for a while because he's just going to speed right past them. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. From the 42-yard line, here's the second and five. They'll go up the middle with White. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Here is third down and four. Throwing, Mayfield. A quick throw there he is incomplete. And a smart play there. He's probably saying, I wish I would have done that on the last drive instead of throwing the interception. Here's Jake Camarda now. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. The Packers ready to take over offensively. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense, gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. They will run the draw with Jacobs. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Nice run defense presented there. And what I mean by that is discipline. The guys filling the right gaps in the right holes. No one over pursuing and making a very nice play. Second and nine. Once again, it's Jacobs. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 
13 yards, first down Packers. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Jacobs going to try the middle. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. They work now on second and nine. This to Jacobs on the toss right. Trying to get out wide, but he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Love. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. On play action. Love to throw. Throw caught by Musgrave. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Love, they go play action now. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Trying to run for it with Jacobs. Pass the 20! And he's going to get this down inside the five before he's out of bounds. 82 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. So it was third and one, the defense, they stacked the box, and that's the problem. You break through that first level, there's no second level. And most good running teams work against stacked defenses. They don't care if you have six in the box, seven in the box, eight in the box. It doesn't matter to them. Block people, give your running back a chance, because it could pay off big as it just did there. Here we go now on first and goal. To pass, here's Jordan Love. He's got Watson, it's caught, touchdown Packers. The three yard touchdown pass. And the Packers post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself, no reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it was all capped off by a touchdown catch from Christian Watson. So now Carlson, after the touchdown, called on to send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. The Bucks ready to take over once again. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Come on. 
They start to drive with White. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw taken in by Palmer. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw, Mayfield. That's again complete to Palmer. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 more yards for him there. It's a first down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. A first down throw for Mayfield. Here's White, they set up the screen. No gain on the screen there, it's second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips the play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they're able to get to him on it. Mayfield. But it's caught. Tompkins. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Mayfield. He's a diminutive receiver, Charles. Not a ton of size, but still able to bring that in against double coverage. I think that's a great job by him of understanding angles because you mentioned his size. He's not going to go over the top of someone or body someone out of the way. He's got to make sure he creates enough space for himself by getting people into the wrong spot on defense, moving them with his body, and then showing his numbers to the quarterback to be open. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Mayfield with it once more. This one taken in by Otten. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Mayfield looks to throw. This is White on the screen. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Mayfield now. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. Well, this is a half where not just the coverage, but the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Going to the air again with Mayfield. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A seven-yard 
touchdown grab. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. I don't think it's any state secret to know what they were saying before the start of this drive. Let's go and punch one in the end zone and go into the halftime feeling a heck of a lot better about ourselves. Let's go get this done. Yeah, tie things up, and then you get a brand-new ball game. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Packer offense heading back for one final first half drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Final 24 seconds of the first half as they come up here first and 10. Now Love. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios and this EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They are all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. The Bucks' offense set to begin this third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles. So as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the peewee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. So nothing doing there, and it's second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now a second and ten. Mayfield to throw it. Finding Otten once more. And they get him down, but not before he takes 
takes it across the 40-yard line. A big pick up there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. One well, of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. First down, Mayfield. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. On a handoff, it's White. And he'll be stopped at the 46, gain of three. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Now third down and seven. Mayfield. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion. Really good pickup. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Now Mayfield. That quick pass here to Godwin. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Well, as we all know, possessions are crucial in a tie game, and let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have the Bucs first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can't go with a, try to go with a quicker guy and sometimes you even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Second and seven with our score tied at seven, but they're planning to change that soon. Only question, will they get three or six out of it? Throwing, Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. And they'll accept that penalty.
So a special team's mistake on the field goal try leads to a new set of downs inside the red zone. Now back to the ground game with White. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Here's a second and eight. They stay on the ground with White. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On third down, Mayfield. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. Boy, that one was well read defensively. And this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. They'll run for it. This is White. And he's not going to get the first. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. And you wonder, Charles, could that decision come back to haunt them later? And it really could because in this situation, you kick the field goal in a tight game like this, that's a good play. Yeah. But maybe what he's saying to himself is, I'm just not a big proponent of the old idea that any possession that ends in a kick, I'm happy with. He wanted to be really aggressive. A little twist here in the third quarter. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. 103 yards on the ground here for Jacobs, and this is a first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. First down, love to pass. He'll get this underneath to Jacobs. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Give him 10 there. Good enough for a Packer first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Love. And that one off the mark, behind him, incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Here's second and ten. Here's Love. He finds his man, complete. That's Reed. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 13 yards, first down Packers. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jordan Whitehead. And the Buccaneers are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and ten. Oh, 
Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 46. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this is caught by Evans. So the completion good for seven there at its second down. On the handoff, this is White, able to fight through one tackle. And this won't be enough to pick up the first, a gain of two, third and one. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick, more than a space eater. He just made a great play there. Here now, third and a yard. They give to White on the option, and he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. At least it would appear that way. He didn't get it by much, but yes, they do get the conversion on third and one. We ought to come up with a t-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. Oh, the turnover fest continues. Here's another interception. And the Packers will take over possession here up at the 44. With Charles in a tie game, you always wonder who's going to be making the big plays. Right now, it's not the offensive players. We're seeing these defenses step up and take control. Both of the last two drives have ended with interceptions. They are certainly dictating this game, aren't they? Now it's going to come down to which offense can follow their defense's lead and step up in the clutch themselves. Loving the Packers now with a first and 10 at their own 44. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Short throw, he's got Kraft. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring up second down. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Here's a second and five. Throwing, love. And his throw is incomplete. This defense trying to do its part, active hands on that play, but their offense hasn't given them much to work with. So they're not going to worry about it. On their side of the ball, all they're concerned about, can they create some scoring opportunities and help out that offense? They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Love looking to throw it. Looking deep here for Dobbs. And this is taken in at the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. When you get into the second half of the tie ball game, you start realizing that every play takes on a bigger significance, and this is pretty significant right here. This is where you start putting the pressure on that secondary, and that's a job well done there. Jacobs. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Jacobs again. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Josh Jacobs takes it in from a yard out. And the Packers have taken the lead. Ah, oh, what a luxury it is to be able to call a bowling ball like Josh Jacobs down near the goal line. 5'10", 220 pounds, and he's not afraid to get in there and get the tough yards. He finishes off this drive with a touchdown run. Joseph now to have the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. 
So that drive spanned five plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. Carlson back out there now to send this one away. From the end zone, here's Devin Tompkins. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. To throw Mayfield. That's taken in by Palmer. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. They run straight ahead here with White. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Big Kenny Clark that time pushing up field to make the tackle for loss. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. On second down, they'll run with White. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Call it no gain there, and it brings forth a third and long. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. On the left side, a catch by White. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Before they can get the punt away, whistles as we've come to the end of the third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. On second down, Jacobs. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be... And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Levante David. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter, 
turning it over. Now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. the interception Mayfield and his throw here is incomplete Mike Evans the one he was looking for and now it's second down Now a give up the middle. This is White. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get him much at all. No, not at all. And that leaves him with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. On third down, a run from White. And he's going to be taken down short of the first, right around the 15-yard line. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown, because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well, because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Rashad White, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. But we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth-quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. Nixon now from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Levante David in on the tackle. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him picks up three on that carry love now on second down throw caught by Musgrave and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line give him 18 on that play and Green Bay has the first as well and after that completion you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position the tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Love now to pass on first down. He'll take his shot for the end zone. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. 
So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty. First and goal. They'll run it with Jacobs. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll bring a tight end in motion. Now they'll send a tight end in motion left. Dillon. Fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Love, this is third and goal. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Romeo Dobbs. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Packers answer back with a touchdown of their own to break our tie and take the lead here in the fourth. So, Charles, this game feels like it has been punch, counterpunch all throughout, and that touchdown breaks our tie here in the fourth quarter. You're making me want to get back in the gym and start training again. You talk about those punches and counterpunches. I also think this is where you and I start thinking to ourselves, Who's going to make the play to change that, right? Who's going to get out of this little cycle that they're in right now and make a play and give their team a firm advantage? So after the made field goal, here's Carlson to send it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So out come the Bucks now. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 24. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This is caught by Evans. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. Second and ten. They defer to White out of the shotgun. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. 79 yards rushing for him now as he's toted it 21 times. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Throw left side, hauled in by Otten. That'll give him eight that time, and they'll be left with second and a couple. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. From the 38 now, here's second and a couple. They'll go up the middle with White, and that 
play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 31-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Mayfield off the play fake. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. 25 yards that time. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from evening this one up. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in. Okay. You know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Here comes the offense again. And let's focus on Josh Jacobs for a moment. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably gotten some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. On first and 10, Love. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. Gary did his primary job with an interception earlier, but here he gets a chance to be a pass rusher and takes on the challenge of blitzing and makes another big play. That's something to file away and maybe break out later in this one or in a future game. Jacob's going to try the middle. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Third and long for Love. That's to the tight end, Musgrave. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. This is brought in at the 21. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll start here with a handoff to White. 
He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Second and five. They keep it on the ground, wide again. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. 88 yards rushing now for the ball game on 24 carries. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and 10. Now a give to White, and he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. Second down, eight yards to go. They run the draw play. This is Wayne. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the four yard line. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. Here's first down. Mayfield to throw. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Offense is moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Under 90 seconds to go. Here's second and 10. Mayfield. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly what you do. It's both <laughs> because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. Now back to the ground game with White. And he'll get this to the 40, but that's still going to be a few yards short of the first down. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked the special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. The loves throw brought in by Watson. What do you think? Play this safe? Just worry about getting to OT? Yeah, don't make any risky throws. It's going to change the outcome. But if anyone slips, take the big shot. Defense! Defense! Well, this crowd into it now. Third and two. Trying to run for it with Jacobs. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and ten. 
Love looking to throw it. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Now Love. Got Dobbs over the middle. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Ah, uh, forget about matriculating the ball down the field at this point of the game. They needed a big chunk, and they got one. And now, you're one completion away from giving your kicker a chance to win the game. This is first and ten. Here's Love. That's taken in, Dontavian Wicks. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. So, advantage Packers here. They'll possess the ball first with a chance to win it here in overtime. This fielded right at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. First down, going to the air with Love. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now yeah, becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Second down, Jacobs once more. And only a couple for him there as the tackle is made at the 42. Two yards on the first down carry and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Opening drive of overtime and now facing a third down and six. Big play coming up. Love looking to throw it. Now this aired out deep for Reed. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, I know you're toward the middle of the field here, but still, fourth down this distance, you've got to punt it right. That's definitely the first instinct because you say, okay, let's just play some field position, make sure we don't lose the game here, turn it over in a key spot. But if you feel really good about your trigger guy, <laughs> if you feel great about him, you might want to leave the ball in his hands and let him work his magic. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points, and now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old-school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. 
On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. Now a throw here to his running back. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, he's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice game, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Keeping the aggression going on defense in overtime here, a first down blitz. You know you can get burned on it big time if they pick it up, but in this situation, they brought the blitz, put some pressure on the QB, and he wasn't able to complete a pass downfield. Here's Mayfield. He gets it over the middle of the corner. And he gets this with the midfield before he's brought down. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. That last pass puts him over 300 yards now in the game. More importantly, though, big first down here in OT. And the team around him has a lot of confidence now after picking up that first down. Everyone seems a little more energized. But did I hear you before the game call in and say, this is my quarterback for your fantasy <laughs> league? Because he just gave you a good stat, didn't he? He did, and I appreciate it. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And for one of the few times here today, this one's not going to go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Rashawn Gary coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. That's a ball he needs to let go of there. Wasn't the most time in the world to work through his progression, but NFL quarterbacks, they've got to sense the pressure. They've got that internal clock, and the ball has to be gone. And if you're not going to escape and run for it, you have to let it go before the pressure gets to you and puts you on the ground. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And that won't buy him much room. Just a one-yard gain to the five. This being their second opportunity in overtime. Third overall drive. See if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs. Move the ball downfield. Have some confidence. Get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick a field goal to win it. But I tell you this. If I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands. Critical situation. Now is their time. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Out of the shotgun, it's Love. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And way up past 
the 35 before he's taken down. That goes for a gain of 31. Just straight money right there. The biggest drive of the game, a chance to win it in overtime. If they've been saving that play, they sure pulled it out at the right time. A huge turn of events there. Much more room to operate under after the big play. Here's first and ten. Play fake. Here's Love. And got his man complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back plays of right around 30 yards, and the field position has totally been flipped. Offensively, back-to-back -back really nice plays. This defense had got two timeouts, maybe should burn one. Yeah, when you get back-to-back -back explosive plays, to me, anything over 10 yards, I don't care if it's a run or a pass, I count it as an explosive play. That sets your defense back on its heels. A timeout here would be a good idea and try and get themselves settled because we're an OT. This is big time. Here's Jacobs on first and ten. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Second down, Jacobs once more. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it, brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. On third down, here comes Jacobs. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Tension building. Here's Greg Joseph. This to win it in overtime. And the Buccaneers go ahead and take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. Now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And there'll be some happy cheese heads tonight as the Packers have won the game. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Tampa.